Hey guys, it's Crystal with Pure, and just really fast, for the next few minutes I wanted to go over just your basic editing tools in ACR. Yesterday I covered a little bit of these tools over here and some of Adobe Bridge. I covered adjustment brushes and radio filters and white balance tools before, so I just want to cover your editing tools over here. So if you open up an image and you just open up one, this is what it's going to look like. I showed you yesterday what it looks like. If you open up multiples, you'll have your other images over here. So this is just your basic editing uh, tab right here. It covers exposure, contrast, your highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, clarity, vibrance, and saturation, and also your white balance. I don't do much with vibrance and saturation. If I do, I do it very little. It can, be, it can get heavy-handed very fast. And so I tend to not mess much with it. I do love to lower my clarity on my photos to a negative 15 to negative 20, depends on the photo. But if you just look at that right there, if you look at these harsh shadows, not harsh shadows, but just the detail right here, if I lower it, it just kind of softens that. And so I love that. And especially on skin tone, I especially love it because it just kind of adds a little bit of softening, but it doesn't take away from the sharpening. If you do it too much, it will. I'll show you what it looks like. It can get very glowy. And if you go the other way, it can get very crunchy. And so if you want to know how to do those high def looking images of uh, buildings, you can up your clarity and that will help you get closer to that look. So here you have your white balance. You can change it. If I changed it to auto, if it, what it, this is what it would have looked like if I had just shot it on auto white balance. And it's pretty close, but when I shoot, I typically shoot in Kelvin, and so, and you can see right there, it's much closer to where it should be. And that's less post-processing work that I'm going to have to do. And, and on a wedding, that's, you know, over a thousand images that I have to wipe, correct the white balance on, so I try to get it right in camera if possible. So you can change the temperature and the tint here if you need to add, if, if you feel like there's maybe too much green, you can add more magenta and so on. So you have your exposure, your contrast, your highlights. If you raise your highlights, you can see it's raising the highlights there. You don't want to get too crazy. I do have my clipping warnings and my highlight warnings on. So if I turn those off, that's what it looks like. If I turn this on, you'll see red pop up. And all that's telling me is that those areas that are red have zero detail. And the same with the black. If I lower my blacks, they'll go blue. And what that's telling me is that those areas in the bouquet there have zero detail. And so you obviously don't want to do that. If you raise the blacks, it'll make it more bright and airy. And I like doing that. If you raise your, your highlights, you can also raise your blacks. And I probably won't raise my highlights as much. And then I'll actually come over here. The next tab will be your tone curve. So you got your parametric and your point. And your point acts just like, almost like a curves inside of Photoshop. This is your curves right over here. I'm pointing to it. And so it acts just like that. If you have a point on there that you want to get rid of, let's say you do this and you're later on, you're like, oh, that's too bright. You can just grab that and drag it to the corner really fast and let go and it will get rid of that point. Your parametric is where you can, again, fine tune the lights, dark shadows, and so on. So I can pull the, the highlights over and you'll notice it's creating a curve here. It's not affecting this curve, but it's creating this little curve here. So I can pull my lights over or over this way, however you want to do that. And I can adjust my darks. Again, however you want to do that. And I'm not worried too much about little details because I can still see the detail in the veil here. And I like how light and airy the photo is. So then the next option here is your details. It's your sharpening and noise reduction. It will default to a specific sharpening. You can up that or lower that. And also your noise reduction, if you shot in a high ISO or if you shot a photo that was underexposed pretty significantly and you had to raise the exposure, you're gonna get a lot of noise. And so this is where you will fix that. So then right here you have your HSL panel, your hue, saturation, and luminance. When it comes to skin tones, I typically like to desaturate the reds and the oranges like a negative five to a negative six, especially if I have um, people that, 
or brides in particular that overly tanned. It just kind of, they paid for the tan, so I don't want to get rid of it too much, but it kind of takes the harshness off of it. And the luminance, also the reds and the oranges, I will raise the luminance. The reds and the oranges are typically your skin tone. The oranges are more your skin tone. And so I will raise the luminance. See, you can raise the luminance here. And it just adds another, you know, just adds some brightness to the photo. And here you can change the hues. I don't do a lot with the hue changing because I feel like sometimes that changes the coloring of the image and I want to be true to what the image was. But this is where you can uh, change if you want to add some greens, if you want to change the color of your greens. I mean, there's so many options. So, but sometimes even for portraits, I do mess around with these. I mean, it can be fun to give an artistic edit or if you want to make your pictures look more fallish because your client couldn't book right in the fall. I love using the hue panel that helps me achieve the, that look. So here you have your split toning. And so a lot of people, I don't think use this and it's actually pretty underused. I'm going to go ahead and lower my highlights. It's really bugging me. That's so bright. Um, so you have your split toning. And so here you can choose basically a color, and then the saturation. So the higher the saturation, the stronger this color will be. So I'm going to choose a color. So I'm going to just come over here. And right now it's not doing anything. So if I move this up, I'm going to be really extreme really fast. So this is just affecting the highlights. If I come over here and choose a different color and move the saturation up, these are affecting the shadows. And so now it's competing on which color to show. It's trying to blend this shadow and highlight color that I'm, it's trying to to split it. And so you have your balance tool here. And so if I move it to the right, so like the positive number, it's going to give less room to the shadows and more to the highlights. And if I move it into the negative, it's going to give more room to the shadows and less to the highlights. I hope that makes sense. So you can also use that to your benefit. This is a little extreme. I do like to use uh, split toning to warm my photos, to warm them up sometimes. And so I'll go ahead and just show you really fast a number that I, not, I mean, every now, every picture would be different. And so you have to kind of play around with it. So this is a, this is a warming number that I like 42. And then as you bring it up, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Obviously I won't do that. Um, and so I'll come over here. And I feel like that's a good like warming, but I also need to raise the exposure at this point now. And so, oh, let me go ahead and default this, sorry. And so I feel like if I pull this down a little bit, I feel like that's, that's much warmer. And if I feel like it's a little too warm, I can still come over here and lower the saturation. So this is zero. And I think maybe even like 10% or so is good. I feel like that is a much warmer photo. And then I could come over and add a little bit of black for some pop. And by add, I mean go into the negatives because if you go if you go positive, it raises the blacks. If you go negative, it lowers. I mean, it adds contrast. And then maybe if I wanted to fix. So here we have, let me turn that off. And those little areas right there, I'm not too worried about those being black because they're falling into deep shadows. I'm mostly worried if I start losing like these details right here, but losing those little details right there, I'm not as worried about. Okay, so we have our split toning. And then here you can, if you have the, uh, you know, like sometimes you get the purple line around your photos, um, around your people when they are up against horizon lines and stuff like that, this will help you get rid of that. You can choose your color and the purple or the green and move it over and it it really works really well and so here you have your vignetting so if you go positive it's going to add you know like the white around and if you go negative it'll add black we do like to use a little bit of black vignetting i like to because i feel like it draws your eyes in you don't want to get too crazy obviously and your midpoint the the uh, the lower this number so let me show you. So now it's blending more into the center. But if I raise this number, you see how there's less area, I guess. Um, I'm trying to 
less black on around the edges. There's less space. So if you just keep it in the 50%, you can also choose the roundness of it. Like you can have it just be like the straight edges, almost kind of like an old camera picture. Or you can have it be really, uh, just really round. You can also increase the feather or decrease to where you have just a circle. So, I mean, there's tons of, uh, oh, oops, I need to put it at 50. There's tons of different options. And so it really depends on what you want. I don't use it too heavily handed. I don't ever go above like negative 25 or so. But then you have your camera calibration. You can choose your camera profiles here. I usually use Adobe Standard. You have Camera Faithful, and Nikons have different ones. You have Camera Neutral. It just changes the the raw file. It, it changes what you're, what you're starting with. I always like to start with Adobe Standard. I feel like it fits my style more, but definitely play around with those and see which one fits you more. And you can change the coloring right here if you want to also you can add more magenta or green to your shadows you can change the hue of your greens you can see that that's changing those so I mean there's tons of options there and then you have your presets I don't have any right in right now so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I get those in so right here we have a app an Apple is a specific way and a Windows PC is a specific way. In our download for presets, we do have instructions. For Apple, you're gonna go to your Go menu and you're gonna hit your option button and you're gonna see the library. You don't wanna just go to the normal library, you wanna go to the hidden library. This is where people usually run into problems. So you click that and then you go to application support. And I believe on Windows it's app data um, or application data and then you come to Adobe and then you come to camera raw and then you come to settings and then where you download it so our everything peer you have your ACR presets and so I'm just gonna go ahead and install presets one and you're going to use your settings your local adjustments are your brushes and I'll show you where to put those so settings and then you just Grab those and command C or control C to copy and then paste. You don't want to just drag it over this. So now all these presets are there. Okay. So, and I'll actually come over and do the set two. So develop settings, command C, control C, command C, command B. Okay. So those are there now. Okay, so now if you look, it's still not there. So I'll go ahead and just hit done and come back to my bridge. And I'll open the image again. And now if I come back over here, they're all right here. So, and now I can, I'll go ahead and hit default and get rid of anything. And now I can just go ahead and do a preset. And to run a preset, you just click a, an image and I mean not an image but you click the name of a preset and so I just did basic workflow and then again I could come over and lower the vignette if I wanted to if I felt like it was a little strong or lower my highlights a little bit presets are 100% adjustable we don't recommend saving over them I recommend just coming in and physically altering whatever it is that you want to alter just because if you save over the preset, I don't want you to eventually lose the presets that you purchased from us. So that's how I, you can change anything in the presets you want. You just have to um, just go to these different tabs to change it. So, and if you wanted to start over, you hold down your option button and hit reset and it will reset the image to what it was when you opened it. So this is what it was when I opened it. So if I hit default, it'll bring it back to no adjustments. This is what it was when I brought it in originally. And then I could come back over and edit it really fast. And there we go. So, and again, like I feel like that's a good edit. So, I mean, I could do everything by hand or I could just run a preset and it would, it would be done super fast. So if you have any questions, 
let me know and I will go ahead and try to answer them. Thanks so much.